Hello, my most devout followers, and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. Today I have a new video. This one will be the third ethic deep dive. And as we're moving clockwise with it, and we started with authoritarian, worked our way through spiritualist, we are now moving into militarist. Militarist overall is interesting. There aren't very many aspects to go over so this should be a relatively short and sweet video i will try to get into at least a bit more detail than you would just get from looking at the wikipedia but without further ado we can jump in and look at the militarist bonuses so looking at just the regular militarist first we can see that we get minus 10 percent claim influence cost as well as plus 10 percent ship fire rate for principles we only have the no retreat word doctrine the same can be said for Fanatic Militarist, as we just double the benefit of the regular Militarist up to 20% respectively. The only difference being that we cannot use the Defensive Wars policy. So looking at Militarist's first bonus, we can see that we get a 10% or 20% claim influence cost reduction, depending on if we are the regular or Fanatic variant. and claims in the game have a base cost of 50 influence and they can be multiplied by several factors you can have an additive plus 25 cost for hyperlane distance if the system is an upgraded starbase or if the system is colonized as well as there are several additive multipliers the largest being a hundred percent during an offensive war and several other reductions not including militarist ethics such as nationalistic zeal, interstellar dominion, the Khan's throne relic, uh, certain ruler agendas and technologies. And if you're able to combine this to a point where we get to 100%, then the claim cost will become zero. As well as there is one other way to increase it, and that is by having a rivalry, in which case you will get a minus 20% claim cost reduction, and this is multiplicative after the other multipliers. It's important to note that you can have multiple claims on a system. So if you are fighting a war with your neighbor who is an ally, and he has a claim on a system and you have a claim on a system, uh, at the end of the war, the claimed system will go to the empire who has the most claims. And if you have the exact same amount of claims, it will go to the oldest claim. So your claim influence cost reduction can allow you to secure additional systems either during an offensive war with an ally or just allow you to claim more systems before you go to war. Now looking at militarists second bonus we can see here that for the regular ethic we get plus 10% ship fire rate and for the fanatic variant we get plus 20% ship fire rate. Now every weapon has a cooldown, so after attacking, it has a mandatory time delay it has to go through before it can attack again. But keep this in mind so that if you are fielding relatively similar fleets and your fleet has a higher ship fire rate, it will be reflected in the actual overall estimation of your fleet power. And also, if their ship is able to fire and your ship is able to fire back, they will have to take a longer time reloading the same exact weapon as you do. So you might be able to destroy some of their ships before they're even able to fire back and damage yours, kind of cascading into what is initially just a 10% ship fire rate bonus, can equate to actually winning or losing a fight entirely. An easy way to display this is just a simple test. I've taken two fleets with identical compositions in terms of shields, armor, weapons, components, admirals, and as you can see here, the fleet fire rate bonus for one is 28% and the, un the other is 38%. A simple 10% bonus in fire rates equates to a slightly higher damage. And I've taken these two fleets and pitted them against each other both sent to attack one another 40 times. Over the 40 times, the one with 10% additional fire rate won 26 of the battles, where the one who is missing the 10% fire rate only won 14 of the battles. So, although it's not a perfect example, it does kind of show that normally you'd expect to see 20 victories and 20 victories if these were two evenly matched fleets, but the one with 
10% extra fire rate was able to pull ahead on six additional victories than you would normally expect for two fleets of comparable firepower. Now, the last thing to keep in mind is that there aren't necessarily diminishing returns, but since they do add up in a linear fashion, the first one will make a proportionally bigger difference for your combat and ship fire rate. So going from something like 100% to 150% is a 50% faster increase, whereas going from 150 to 200% is only a 33% faster increase. Uh, in relative terms, it feels diminishing because it's not exponential. Uh, keeping all of that in mind, it is still better to have more ship fire rate. So really the only thing you have to weigh is what is the opportunity cost of increasing my ship fire rate? Is it a repeatable technology, which is a relatively low opportunity cost, or is it going from a regular ethic to a fanatic ethic, which is a much higher opportunity cost? Now looking at the policy benefits for militarists, both the regular and fanatic variants will get the no retreat war doctrine. This will give us 100% disengagement chance reduction, plus 50% emergency FTL jump cooldown, and plus 33% fire rate. Now looking at the negatives first, as those are some big numbers, the disengagement chance reduction being increased by 100% effectively means that your ships will never have a chance to disengage, regardless of what you do. Even if you add a trickster admiral, your ships are just prevented from ever disengaging or retreating naturally. So even if you add a trickster admiral, they will still all die if it's a fight that you would otherwise lose. Now, of course, you can still force your ships to retreat using the emergency FTL button. It's just in this case with the no retreat war doctrine, that timer is increased by 50%. So normally it takes 30 days. Now it will take 45 days. So you can take significant losses even just in those additional 15 days, which can make this still pretty rough to take. The main benefit being that we get the 33% ship fire rate from the no retreat war doctrine. As shown before, just having more ship fire rate than your opponent will generally equate to you winning more battles. In terms of how useful this is, it can ebb and flow with your gameplay, your playstyle, and what you're doing. If you're playing versus the AI, it might not be the best thing to take, as you more often than not will lose more ships with this as they are not able to disengage. And versus the AI, you can usually take choice battles and then kind of slowly push into them. If you're playing versus other players or you need to win a battle, which can decide not only the battle but also the total effect of the war, the No Retreat War Doctrine will give you just a little bit more ship fire rate. And if, as long as you have more than your opponent and you're evenly matched, you're more than likely to win. Though it does have its uses. Of course, the last thing to mention is that if you're a fanatic militarist, you cannot take the defensive wars only policy. This should kind of go without saying, and generally speaking, you would never take this anyways, aside from roleplay. There really isn't much to say here, just you can't take it. Now that we've gone over the major benefits and the policies, we're going to look at a couple of other things before we wrap up the video. The first one being the faction and just how easy it is to please. And then we will dive into the civics that require militarist. And lastly, we will give militarist and fanatic militarist their respective ratings on the A to F scale. But first looking at the faction, uh, which should form around year 10 if you're militarist at the start of the game. This faction is actually relatively difficult to please. Initially, they will require things from you that you just might not be able to actually complete. And there's a good chance that you will either be receiving no benefit from this faction in terms of pop happiness, or even a possible negative happiness uh, modifier. So it is something to keep in mind that, at least initially, it is hard to please, but as soon as you are able to declare war and start pleasing the militarist faction, they shouldn't be much of an issue beyond that, and you should be able to keep most of your militarist pops relatively happy throughout the game, as long as you are remaining true to the militarist ideals of consistently being at war. Now putting the civics up here on the screen, overall, the civics that require you to be militarist, or at least once you are militarist, you can take them, they are pretty good for the most part. There are some standout civics uh, among both regular empires and megacorps, some okay civics, and some bad apples, but overall, the civics that you get from being militarist are quite nice. Now that we've looked at everything for militarist, from the major bonuses to the war doctrine, as well as just how the factions play out. 
Looking at the overall rating for starting with regular militarist, we'll be rating it on once again the A plus to F minus tier. There's no S tier, so keep that in mind with my ratings. And for regular militarist, I would put this in the A minus to B plus tier. It's better than it looks at, f at first, simply because winning an early war and just being able to beat your neighbor in the early game from your 30 to your 50 can be the difference between a relatively successful run and an unsuccessful run. And because of that, and because of the extremely powerful civics that it gives you, I didn't go too much into detail with Distinguished Admiralty or Citizen Service, but both of these, to a lesser degree, the Citizen Service, but Distinguished Admiralty pairing that with just a splash into regular militarist can really give you an edge on your opponent, especially within multiplayer, less to a degree in single player. In single player, most of the time you're either stomping the AI or getting stomped. There's less of a room for, you know, kind of these like very close games or close matches. But overall, I would put the regular variant of Militarist within the A- to B plus tier. And looking at the Fanatic variant for Militarist, it does almost exactly what regular Militarist does, just slightly better. You will get 20% instead of 10 for the ship fire rate and the claim influence cost reduction respective. Not much to go off of here. The only thing is that although yes, you will be getting slightly more fire rate and that can equate to maybe an easier battle or being able to take out your opponent, you just have to keep in mind that you're also losing out on picking up another ethic. So you might not be able to pick up Xenophobe or Materialist or Spiritualist, and that can almost be more of a detriment. So I would put the Fnatic variant more in the B plus to B tier. But that's all I have for the Militarist Ethic Overview, so thank you. If you have any comments or questions or concerns, please leave them below. And if you're interested in more content, subscribe to support me. And of course, have a blessed day.